All right, got my got my apprentice here today. We're gonna wire up our boiler system. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. See if we could figure out how to make this all work. put the water heater in the other day. Ours is kind of different. It's uh, it's called an indirect water heater. So there's no actual gas hook up to it. It's gonna be heated by our boiler. So, you know, the, the regular connections are normal. Hot water, cold water goes in, hot water comes out. But these are the, uh, there's another coil inside there that the hot water from the boiler is gonna flow through and that'll heat up the domestic water, which will flow into our manifold, which will work. So this guy the other day, I've got that funny little hose coming off of there. I'm just a rookie plumber. So my soldering sometimes, 
uh, may or may not work. Where the heck did I put it now? Oh, here it is. So what I did, I used my little handy dandy gauge thing here again. And I uh, basically plumbed this pipe onto the manifold there and charged the whole thing up with air. So that would have basically, I had it uh, hooked up to the cold manifold. So all these valves were closed. So I charged up that manifold, which goes through the water heater into the hot manifold. So just hooking up that one pipe there, I was able to test the whole basically water circuit here. I don't know if that's the correct terminology in plumbing, but uh, basically test everything out and it all held there. So in those, whatever it is, 80 or 100 solder joints there, they all actually held, so. Gonna get lucky once in a while, I guess. Finally got this boiler piping all finished up. This was kind of fun. I enjoyed this. But I've never never done boiler piping before. But Keen gave me a little drawing to work off of. And this is how it turned out. So sorry to any mechanical guys out there. I'm I've said it before, I'm just a dumb electrician, just a dumb sparky. So Here's my understanding of what I built. And this part blew my mind right here, actually. This is the supply of water. This is the hot water coming out of the boiler. This is the return water after the whatever, you know, the, the heat is used up in the water. It's coming back to be reheated. You actually connect the two together. So, you know, in electrical terms, that's a, that's a short circuit. <laughs> But in plumbing, mechanical, heating world, that is what you need to do, I guess. So 
the hot water comes out through this way up and then it just branches off to three different pumps so this one here it sends the hot water out across there out to the garage and then the water comes back through this pipe here this one here is going to do the in-floor heating in the basement so this pump's different this one's called a self-regulating pump it um, regulates itself based on demand so um, over here is the manifold I built to operate the in-floor heating down here. I'm missing a couple of parts yet. There's a, a valve body on the back here, this brass piece. And then this is the actuator on the front. So uh, the supplier, they didn't have these three valve bodies. So they're ordered there. They should be here in a couple of weeks. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So depending on how many of these actuators are open, that pump will ramp up or down. So, you know, if you've got one zone open, we're gonna have them zoned off, like each bedroom will have its own thermostat. And then depending on how we develop this area, there are four separate zones over there. So we can do whatever we want there and turn the heat up and down in each room. So this pump will take care of that though. So if we've got one zone open, it'll be, you know, at one speed. If we've got four zones open, it'll be at another speed. And this guy here does our domestic hot water. So the hot water goes through into the into the coil inside here and then back out to the boiler here so yeah 65 gallon water tank should be plenty to fill up candace's enormous tub over there i don't think we should have any problems plus sir, we have a hundred fifty thousand btu boiler so basically that means we have a hundred fifty thousand btu water heater because anything that boiler can output we could put into this water through this black iron pipe here and the other part of it that's really important is this piece right here this is called the low water cutoff switch so it's got to be mounted up above the boiler i think that's acceptable probably could be up a little bit more but the way the piping worked out i think it should be good though because it's above where the heating is but if this doesn't have water in it it won't send power it'll shut the power off to the boiler so you don't try to heat this thing up with no water in it because that will bad things will happen uh there's a couple other parts here this is called an air separator um so when i was kind of reading about this stuff it's kind of neat how it was explained um you know when you heat up a pot of water and those bubbles start uh, start forming on the outside of the pot that air was already in the water so as you heat it up, uh, it becomes less and less soluble, or the, I guess the, the gas becomes less soluble in the water, or however it works, the water is able to dissolve less gas in it, or whatever. Anyway, the water wants to come out though, or the air wants to come out, so this little guy will kind of give a spot for that air to come out of there. And also, when you heat up water, it expands. So if these pipes are full of water, and they're cold and then you start throwing some heat in them they're going to grow like or the water is going to want to take up more space so this little guy will allow that ha to happen so it's got a little air bladder on the bottom here and then as that water expands it'll just push down on that bladder and then as it cools off it'll push back and everything's happy so this yeah this was fun this was a lot of work but it turned out pretty good Take you to that manifold outside in the garage. The one in the, in the garage, it's just on or off. We didn't need those actuators on it. So we'll have a little thermostat out there. When it calls for heat, everything will turn on at once. Oh, we're done painting up here. Take you, show you around there too. Uh, have a bonfire here once it dries up outside again. Got garbage everywhere. But here's the manifold outside. So same deal, except uh, there's no actuators, just five zones. And this guy here, we ran a, another pipe down there. 
This is for, it's called a slab sensor. So there'll be a little, uh, I think it's a thermistor, I, th I think it's what it's called. A little uh, sensor in the slab that'll tell the boiler what the temperature is out here. And then this little guy right here, on the return side, I'm gonna put in one of those little brass air uh, bleeders there. <coughs> to just another spot to get the air out of the system so we don't end up with any air locks or anything like that. Should work good. So pretty quick here, gonna get on to cabinets. My mom and Candace did all this painting it's over Easter week here, Easter holidays for Candace. I, I worked all week, but they were here painting. Yeah, turned out pretty good. Yeah, so I'm gonna go pick up cabinets on Thursday this week, I believe. Well, next week, I guess it's Friday today. Thursday next week. And start putting them in. And then we'll pick up flooring, install that. Candace ordered the stone for behind this thing. I've got to take this drywall off and put on, um, there's a couple options. There's this tile backer board. It's like drywall, but it's got like a waterproof something or other on the outside. But it's horrifically expensive right now. So I think I'm just going to get this cement board. It's this half inch. It's actually cement board. I think it's more meant for tile, under tile, for flooring. But it'll work just fine for that. <coughs> and a bomb went off down here too. It's been all winter. <laughs> the whole winter is worth the garbage. Gotta light a bonfire again. Get rid of all this cardboard. What else? Oh, we had our, our water test come back. Our well water is awesome. It's awesome. We've got less than 200 parts per million uh, total dissolved solids. There's no iron, there's no magnesium, um, and there's uh, calcium, a little bit of calcium. They said it's about twice as hard as city water, which is, which is good. Like for a well, that's fantastic. You can't ask for anything better. So our little well over there gives us really nice, good water. So all we need is a water softener and, uh, and an RO filter for drinking water. No iron filter, no crazy, you know, uh, UV lights, or there's all sorts of stuff you can get that kill bacteria. And we don't need any of that stuff. So I think the RO filter is probably gonna live up here because the two places we need it are just on the other side of the wall. We need it for the pot filler and for the drinking water tap upstairs. Oh, and I guess for the fridge too. We'll probably throw it up there for the ice maker and for the fridge. Um, so yeah, I think the RO is gonna go here and the uh, water treatment, uh, the water softener will go here. So we've got this drain for when it uh, recharges itself. And I've got this one inch pipe up here waiting to be turned down. It's gonna hook up so this this will be our, our main water feed to the house and then we'll come out of the that'll feed into the water softener we'll come out of the water softener hook up to that guy that guy runs over here and feeds uh, both the cold side of the water heater and the cold water manifold there and then we come out of the water heater and feed the hot water side so Real simple. I think we'll just tag right off of that uh, one inch pipe there for our RO filter. And that should be that. Gotta start hooking up some more gas fixtures here pretty soon. Get that fireplace going. Get the boiler going. But I think I've babbled on enough here. Yeah. So, lots going on. Lots left to do. Got my apprentice here today. We're gonna wire up our boiler system. Hey B. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure out how to make this all work. I'm pretty sure that's already gonna work. 
Well, I think the piping will work, but it won't do anything until we wire it, right? <laughs> so we got three pumps to wire. We've got our uh, actuators to wire. We've got the boiler itself to wire, the low water cutoff. And then we've got uh, a temperature probe for the hot water supply. And we've got a temperature probe for the domestic hot water. And what else is there to do here? Oh, there's the slab sensor outside. We've got all sorts of wiring to do here, buddy. See if we can make it work. <laughs> 